This is CBY, Christian Broadcasting of Yakima, your local Christian television station, bringing to our valley quality Christian programming for more than 40 years. I'm Tina Wanamaker, and welcome to There's Hope. Today, we're going to be chatting about when God gets our attention, when God gets my attention and when he gets your attention. What does that look like? And we're going to start by looking at the life of Moses and getting a picture of how God got his attention. And then we're going to talk about how God gets our attention. So we're going to begin in Exodus chapter 3 in verse one. So Exodus chapter three, verse one, I'm going to give you a little bit of the backstory. And here in Exodus chapter two, Moses is born and we find that his mother saw that he was a beautiful child. He was lovely to look at. There was something special about him. And so her attention was uh, focused on this child. And so she hid him for three months. And then she decided she could no longer hide him. So she built an ark of bulrushes, a little kind of cradle to put him in. And she set him in the Nile, uh, in the reeds there. Then moving on in the life of Moses here, we find that he is found by Pharaoh's daughter and she sends her maids down to get him. So her attention is brought to something there in the bulrushes. And so he, the child is brought forth and it's opened and then he's weeping and she has compassion on him. And so we see uh, already some attention is being gotten in these areas. And then it's Moses, it's his turn. Uh, and then uh, just another little backstory is we know that Moses went down. Once he was an adult, he was around 40. He went down and he was looking at his brethren he was, you know, seeing how they were being treated. And he saw an Egyptian mistreating a Hebrew. And so he killed him and hit him in the sand. He murdered him. And then the next day he goes out and he sees two Hebrews fighting. And um, they say to him, what are you going to do? Are you going to kill us too? And so in that moment, Moses, his attention was got. Uh, he knew that he had been found out. And pretty soon Pharaoh was going to find out. And Pharaoh did. And so Pharaoh sought him out. And so that at that point, Moses fled into the desert and he ended up in Midian. Uh, and now at this point in chapter three, we find that he's been in Midian for 40 years. He's married Zipporah, a Midianite woman. And he's been um, a shepherd in this time in the, um, what they refer to as the backside of the desert. So now we're gonna take it up here in Exodus chapter three, verse one, which says this. Now Moses was tending the flock of Jethro, his father-in-law, the priest of Midian, and he led the flock to the back of the desert, and he came to Horeb, the mountain of God. And the angel of the Lord appeared to him in a flame of fire from the midst of a bush. So he looked, and behold, the bush was burning with fire, but the bush was not consumed, then Moses said, I will now turn aside and see this great sight, why the bush does not burn. Verse four, so when the Lord saw that he turned aside to look, God called him from the midst of the bush and he says, Moses, Moses. And Moses says, here I am. Then he said, do not draw near this place. Take your sandals off your feet for the place where you stand is holy ground. Moreover, he said, I am the God of your father, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob. And Moses hid his face, for he was afraid to look upon God. And from there, the Lord begins to tell him about the commission that he has for Moses, the assignment. He's like, you're going to go and you're going to free my people. 
And if this is a great example of an attention getter, God got his attention in a supernatural and extraordinary way uh, through a burning bush. And we're going to see a couple of things in this place. It says the angel of the Lord appeared to him in the, in the flame of fire from the midst of a bush. So Moses looks and behold, the bush was burning with fire, but the bush wasn't consumed. So he's walking along on his path, perhaps the same one that he traveled um, with the flock uh, every day, maybe is, you know, what they would do. And so he, here he goes and he looks over and he sees a bush that's burning. But what's interesting about this bush is that when we see things that are on fire, when I light my little fire pile kind of thing, it burns up. But this, this bush was not consumed. So Moses looks over and he's like, what is going on, right? This bush is on fire, but it's not being consumed. And so what does it say that he did? So Moses said, I will now turn aside and see this great sight, why the bush does not burn. So we see God's attention getter when God gets our attention is the bush that's burning, but not consumed. But we have to notice something. It, God does not speak to him until verse three happens. Moses said, I'm going to turn aside and see this great sight why the bush does not burn. This is probably the key here, is that Moses stopped his trek with the flock and he turned, the word turn aside, it means to turn off the path. He's pausing, he's stopping to focus on this attention getter. And as he does that, as he stops and he considers and he looks and he's perceiving what's happening, in that place, God speaks to him. And the same thing is true for us today, that we have to stop. When, when God gets our attention, we've got to stop. We've got to take some time. We've got to turn off of our path, pause and consider and pray and meditate on what it is that God is trying to get our attention for. What's the thing behind the thing? What was the thing behind the bush that was burning and not consumed. It was in fact a commission that God had for Moses. We're gonna go a little bit more into this, but next I want to define the word attention. We're talking about when God gets our attention. So what does that mean? The definition of the word attention is the act or state of applying our mind to something. And so we see Moses doing that here. He's turning aside. He's applying his mind to what's happening with this bush. It's burning, but not being consumed. The definition for attention is also a condition of readiness for such attention involving a selective narrowing or focusing of consciousness and receptivity. So this is, this is very interesting for us to consider. It's a condition of readiness for such attention. And so that tells us that we need to be ready to pay attention, right? When God wants to get our attention, we need to be ready to hear what he has to say. We need to be ready to turn aside. We need to be ready. We need to have our hearts prepared. And that comes uh, from a place of allowing God to move and to work in our lives. Uh, what we see here with Moses in regards to that preparation is we see that he was in the desert 40 years. As I mentioned earlier, we note that Moses, his attention was got a few times before. When he saw the Egyptian mistreating the Hebrew, his Hebrew brethren, this gentleman, and he murdered him. His attention was got by that. Then his attention was also gotten when he knew that he was found out. And so he fled. And so there was an action that followed that. But what we don't see in Moses in his earlier life there is we don't see that pause. We don't see that turning aside to consider 
before the action is taken. We don't see that. And so is it possible that God used this 40 years in the backside of the desert to prepare Moses to bring him to this place where he would turn aside, where he would finally be prepared to receive what God had for him, where he was finally ready to move into this place of commission. We know if we've read this account of his life that he had a lot of uh, things to say to the Lord about, hey, I'm not good enough to do this and so on and so forth. But uh, he did turn aside, he listened to God, and he did ultimately obey God. And that's the key in all of this is, you know, something that I've told the Lord myself is, Lord, my answer to you, it's always yes. It's always going to be yes. But sometimes I need a little time for that preparation of my own heart to get to the yes. And maybe that's what we see here with Moses. The rest of the definition of attention is a consideration of something with a view to take action. Okay, so when God gets our attention, he's trying to do something with us. He's trying to get our attention so that we turn aside and pause. We stop what we're doing so that we can hear from him in whatever area he wants to speak into, whether it be a commission like Moses experienced or a correction, or I mean, there can be so many things and encouragement uh, so on and so forth. But we have to be in a place, we have to be prepared and ask God to prepare our hearts so that we can uh, turn aside and so that we can hear from Him. The reality is, is that oftentimes God's trying to get our attention as believers in Him and we don't turn aside. We just continue, maybe we're too busy, we've got too much going on, we feel like we can't take the time uh, I remember when the kids were smaller and it was very difficult to find that time. Um, but we have to be very purposeful. If we feel like we don't have that time, we have to create that time. We have to somehow clear things off enough so that we can find that time. And even if, let's say that we're in the workplace and we just don't have we don't have that time. We have, if we have a 15 minute break, we can go you know, into our car in the parking lot or whatever that looks like and speak with the Lord about that, whatever that thing is that's getting our attention. And so how does God get our attention? That's another good question. We see how he did it with Moses. Um, in 1 Samuel chapter three, we see God getting Samuel's attention by calling him by name. He says, Samuel, Samuel, and, and Samuel ran to Eli, the high priest who was caring for him. And he says, yes, Eli. And he says, I didn't call you. And so he says, go back to bed. And again, he's laying in bed and Samuel hears Samuel, Samuel, and he runs to Eli again. And this time Eli perceives Eli's attention is gotten. And he perceives that there's something else going on, that it's the Lord that's calling Samuel. And so he tells him what to say. He trains him. Listen, you just say this when the Lord calls you again. And so Samuel goes back to bed and sure enough, pretty soon again, Samuel, Samuel, and Samuel is able to answer him and say, here I am, your servant hears, your servant hears. I'm listening to you, God. What do you have to say to me? And what God spoke to Samuel was actually a very difficult thing. It was a prophecy regarding uh, the family and the household of Eli, uh, which he was to share with him the next day. But over and over through scripture, what we see is we see attention getter, attention getter. God's getting their attention here and here and here and here. And a lot of these things are supernatural. They're really big things. They're things that couldn't happen, like a burning bush and Mount Carmel and um, Miriam's hand becoming leprous and so on and so forth. And so God does use those supernatural big things to get our attention. But what about the daily stuff? How does God speak to us there? Some of the ways that he speaks to us 
are, are I'm going to go through some of those things. Uh, one of them is confirmation. And what I mean by that is uh, how many times have we been studying out a section of scripture, a, a certain scripture, and again, the next day, somebody brings that scripture up. Or, you know, it comes up in Bible study, or it's over here, or the concept is over here. And so confirmation, God's getting our attention through confirmation. And so to turn aside in that area, what would that look like? Well, that would be, God, would you show me what you're trying to reveal to me by bringing this up over and over and over? Because again, we can choose not to turn aside. We can just say, well, that's really neat, God, thanks for that. You know, yay. But the Lord would have us turn aside and pause and meditate on that because he's got something in that for us. He wants to speak into our hearts and lives regarding that. God wants to speak to us. He wants to. We just have to turn aside and listen. And that can be very difficult for us, especially in the U.S. with our fast-paced society. Lord, train us to, to slow down and to turn aside. So another way that God gets our attention would be pain. That is a huge thing. C.S. Lewis, he said, pain is God's megaphone to a deaf world. And isn't that the truth? The pain really gets our attention. It can be emotional pain, it can be physical pain, but it, get, it does, it does the job every time it gets our attention. Uh, me personally, I have experienced um, some, some chronic pain through the years and it did, it got my attention and it got me on my face before the Lord and, and asking him, what do you want to teach me through this? Um, how do you want to speak to me? Uh, how can I further submit myself to you in this place of pain? And the Lord speaks into those areas when we turn aside again and when we focus and when we begin to ask him not to get us out of it, but to get us through it, right? And there's a difference there. And sometimes the Holy Spirit will lead for us to pray to get out of something. And if he's leading, we pray it. But sometimes we need to also uh, embrace whatever that is and move through it and turn aside to it and meditate upon it and see what the Lord would have for us in and through it. And so we've got confirmation, We've got emotional and physical pain. And how else does he speak to us? He speaks to us through situations in life, doesn't he? Like the things of life that come up. Um, I, I can't tell you how many conversations that I've had with, um, I love talking to people. And so uh, I'll just strike up conversations with people. And how many times the Lord has used those conversations to get my attention regarding an issue or something that I need to pray into, or something uh, for the body of Christ. And in those places, we need to pay attention. Like, Lord, what are you trying to say to me through this conversation with this person? What are you trying to say to me through this situation in life and through this hardship or trial or whatever that might be? God also gets our attention through nature we see in scripture, there's a place where a man learns a lesson through a field. We see another place where Jesus is talking about vineyards. A lot of this is agriculturally based. And so in that, we also can have our attention focused in an area of creation. Um, for example, if you see a bird flying in a certain way and uh, there's just something about it that catches your attention. You can turn aside and pray into that. Lord, what is that there? You know, why is that significant in this time of my life? Uh, I remember a, a number of years back, I was watching a tree and the wind was blowing through the branches and those leaves were rustling and blowing. And the Lord spoke to me regarding the section of scripture that talks about how the Holy Spirit is like that. The wind blows. And in the same way, so do those 
who are moved of the Holy Spirit. And so we can see that God sometimes uses nature or his creation to get our attention as well. So what we see so far is we see uh, with Moses, we've seen a supernatural attention getter. We've seen an attention getter through uh, confirmation of scriptures um, or an idea being brought up here and there over and over. We see an attention getter in pain, whether it could be emotional or physical. Recently, my attention was gotten by something and I wanna share that with you. Um, about a year ago, we were in a car accident and someone hit us, uh, maybe a little more than a year, someone hit us. And uh, when they hit us, they did some damage to our vehicle. Uh, and when we took it into the insurance, uh, the, you know, using the insurance, we took it in and the insurance actually wouldn't pay for some of the damage. They would only pay for the cosmetic damage, but we knew there was something more going on underneath the car, maybe with the muffler in some areas. Uh, but it wasn't bothering the driving of the car and it was, there were no problems with that. And so we just put it off. We were like, you know what, we're gonna get to it. And there were no issues with it until recently. Uh, recently, the car has started making quite a racket as we're driving it around. Uh, to the degree that we got out and looked under the car and trying to figure out What's going on under here that's causing all of these troubles? Uh, but we can't see anything. But we know there's a problem because it's making a terrible noise. Uh, and it started out a little slower and now it's fairly constant and fairly loud. And so that has gotten my attention recently. Um, and so we have these attention getters and it's like, okay, this has gotten my attention. So now I've got to do something about it. Uh, like what we were talking about with the definition of attention, the last one there, the consideration with a view to action, that I'm gonna do something about this now. It's time to take action, it's bothering me. Uh, and so it's time to do something about this and take it into the shop and get it taken care of. It's getting my attention, it's focusing my attention on that. And oftentimes we can put stuff off for a long time, can't we? We can say, well, I'll get to that. I'll get to that. And it's only when it's really causing us some problems that we're finally ready to take action on it. Um, and when, when it's right in our face, when it's there, and we can think of that in regards to heart issues as well. It's not just a car problem or, you know, something's wrong with my heater in my house or whatever. Uh, but also heart, heart things. And we can notice that there's something wrong, you know, either in our heart or those around us or in interactions or whatever that looks like. And in those places, God's trying to get our attention too. And he wants us to turn aside and to pray into that and say, God, what is my part in this? And what's my faith action? What do you want me to do here? How can I help this situation? What does that look like? And so in all of these things, again, it's, you know, here's God. He's like, I want to get your attention. So here's an attention getter when God gets our attention. And our part, again, is to turn aside, to consider the situation, the pain, the difficulty, or it can be a good thing as well. Maybe you just got a promotion Maybe um, you're going to have a, a ch new child or a grandchild. And all of these things can get our attention and help us to stop and consider and to say, God, what is it that you're trying to show me in this place? And so again, our part, like Moses, turn aside, consider, meditate, ask God if there's an area of obedience that he wants us to step into regarding this issue. And one other thing that I would like to point out is all of this, all of what we're talking about today, um, all of the attention getting, all of our turning aside or not turning aside, you know, sometimes we choose one or the other, uh, all of 
the listening to the Lord, all of these things are, these are all threads. They're all threads. So my, my husband's grandmother had embroidered this kind of tapestry thing that went onto a chair. And on one side of it is this beautiful picture. It's this roses and it's just lovely. And on the other side, you know, when you flip over to the other side, it's all the little knots and the strings and it's the not pretty side. And we know from scripture, Romans 8, 28, it says that God is working all things together for the good of those who are called according to his purpose and with the goal of conforming us into the image and likeness of his son, Jesus Christ. And so he's working all of those things together for good. And something that we are going to see and that um, we see even in the life of Moses, you know, here's Moses. Um, he, was, he was put into this basket, put in the river, um, you know, ended up being raised up as a young man by the daughter of Pharaoh, but knowing who he was as a Hebrew, ended up murdering a man, fleeing to the desert, uh, wandering, in, not wandering, but going in the desert, feeding the flock for 40 years, uh, all up to this point of the commission that God had for him. And so if we think about all these things, we can think of them as little threads that are all being woven together into the story of Moses's life and into the fullness of God's agenda being completed into this moment where he says, here I am, Lord, here I am, here I am. I'm listening to you is what he's saying. I'm listening to you. And in the same way, everything that's happened in your life, every good thing, every bad thing, everything in between, all of those threads are coming together to accomplish God's agenda and will through your life. The thing about it we have to remember is that we see the side that has the knots and the strings on it, but we have to remember what side God sees. He sees the side over here with the beautiful roses and the fullness of his plan. He also sees how our tapestry intertwines with the tapestries of those around us. We don't get to see all of that. On our side, it's a simple trust. It's a faith walk. And again, the word for faith, I believe we discussed in another uh, teaching is pistis. And it means a reliance upon Christ for salvation and a constancy in that profession. So there's a reliance upon Christ. This is a walk of relying on Jesus, trusting him, and being consistent in doing that. And just knowing that he has a plan. You know, Romans 8, 28, he's working it together for good. He had a plan for Moses. He had a plan for Samuel. He had a plan for Joseph. He had a plan and he has a plan for each one of us. And he has a plan for you too. Our part again is to trust him, to listen when he's trying to get our attention. Don't walk on by, turn aside, take a moment, meditate. If you have the kids at home, go in the bathroom, put on the veggie tails, go in the bathroom for five minutes, lock the door, talk to the Lord. You can create that time and it's worth it to do so. And so that's what we see here. When God gets our attention, it's for his purpose. It's for his agenda to be completed. It's for his will to be done. And again, our part is just to turn aside. And like Moses said, and Samuel as well, here I am, Lord, your servant hears. What do you want to say to me? Because I'm listening to you today. Thank you for joining me. Blessings on you.